My name is Michelle Emsley. I'm the president of Capicoa and I work here at the Yukon Arts Centre in Whitehorse, Yukon, traditional territory of the Kwan Lundun First Nation and Ta'an Kwachun Council. This beautiful snow sculpture was carved for us for World Whale Day Festival. The COVID-19 pandemic has completely disrupted the process for the creation and sharing of transformative artistic expression around the globe. In response, Capicoa's International Market Development Committee launched this project, Connections, to provide artists and presenters virtual space for exchanging ideas and to develop new networks. Canadians came together virtually with their counterparts from Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Denmark, Mexico, Norway, Scotland, and Taiwan. The artists represent a multidisciplinary breadth of work from across Canada and around the globe. As a culmination to the project, we asked each of the artists to produce a three minute video to share their practice with hopes for future international exchange. On behalf of Capicoa, we acknowledge that Connections is supported in part by a contribution from Global Affairs Canada Can Export Association Program and the Department of Canadian Heritage Creative Export Program. And now, let's meet the artists. Sego, Skanagoga. Santi Smith, Dagalunyakwa, Nyungnyats, Gongwehoe, Ganyangehaga, Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. Greetings, my name is Santi, and my Haudenosaunee name is Dagalunyakwa, which means picking up the sky in Gayangeha, the Mohawk language. I'm here on my home territory, and I've been home since March 2020, and really, spending some time to reflect on a lot of things, my career, the work that I want to do, the work for Kahawi Dance Theatre. I am happy to be celebrating the winter months, as you'll see here. Part of that is to recognize our place in the wider natural living universe. The winter is a time when the earth is covered in a blanket of snow, and the Mother Earth is considered to be sleeping, rejuvenating, dreaming, and preparing for the new cycle. And I feel like that's what I've been doing over the past 10 months is rejuvenating, reflecting, and preparing myself to plant seeds in the coming spring. So today I actually uh, ordered all of my seeds online and I will be starting my planting season very soon with germinating seeds, germinating creative ideas, and really being a part of the creative process, still inspired to be working in that way, and still inspired to be working with the land. Where I am right now is a portal that I created, an installation, as a part of our Midwinter Dream Dreaming online offer. And it's been a part of my process for the several years now to work to be inspired, to uh, embody, and also to activate deep listening to the natural world. Much of Haudenosaunee way of being and seeing the world is nature is our greatest teacher. And when we think about COVID-19 and that, uh, how that's affecting the in entire world, we understand that nature is teaching us uh, how interdependent and interconnected we truly are and how important it is to be uh, thinking about our um, sustainability in our health and wellness. Many of our songs and dances have to do with replicating the natural patterning of the living universe. And that's what I'm inspired to do, to be in sync as possible, to be as balanced as possible during this time. Nyawagoa. Thank you. I'm Silje Figens Gutorisen. I work as a contemporary artist in Kirkenes, which is my hometown. It's a little town in the far north of Norway, wedged in between Russia and Finland. Uh, I work from the design tradition that I grew up in. That's the Sami design tradition where you just fix your own problems with whatever is at hand. And I do talk about this as a Sami design tradition, but it's more typically 
Sami than uniquely Sami. I think rural people all over will recognize this ability to fix with whatever you have at hand and also your own skills. Um, I'm thinking of this also as an aesthetical tradition because the outcome is so much based on what you have at hand and what you have saved. But, oh, there's a stick, maybe I could use it someday. Oh, there's half a boat, maybe I could use it someday. Um, and whereas I, well, in the workshop I don't recreate problems, but I try to tap into this material logic and use the material as it is and don't change it too much and see, you know, what does the stick want? And I think it's very much the same thing when I work with things on paper. What does the line want to do if I don't bother it too much? And what happens with this ink if I just let it be ink? It's always about the material somehow. As for the last 10 months, I guess in the beginning I kind of enjoyed it a bit because I could concentrate. But now I'm just bored out of my mind because I'm far away from a lot of things, even though I'm in the middle of other things, but it's, I feel like, I feel like I'm this 17th century upper class woman, you know, with no real purpose of her own, just sitting around and the flu could kill you. It's, I'm so bored. I'm so bored. So for the future, I do hope it's not as digital as this because I really need things to be real again. I need things to be themselves and not pictures of themselves on screens everywhere. I need to meet real people. And I hope that when we go and watch, look at art again, maybe the art, maybe you could touch it. <laughs> maybe you could even bite it. So to see that it's really there and it's a thing of its own, not, not the screen. <laughs> My name is Milton Lim, my pronouns are he, him, and I am an interdisciplinary artist based in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. That's the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. A little bit about myself, I am an interdisciplinary artist who works across dance, theatre, live art, performance art, video art, and installations. My background is in directing and performing for a devised theatre. Uh, but these days, my practice have shifted, has shifted and involves publicly available data, interactive digital media, and importantly, games in order to create uh, simulations, articulations, and expressions of contemporary social political issues. Now, the form of my work often changes a lot from piece to piece as it relates to the content that I'm often working with, and this can change a lot in what it looks like. So sometimes it looks like spectators or participants playing video games or card games on stage. Most often it involves custom interactive digital systems for performance that I've created. Uh, and I do tend to work with non-trained performers or untrained performers. Uh, so hopefully it's somewhat clear that my works are an attempt to break from traditionally held notions of what performance is or should be uh, in favor with engaging with alternative modes of performance. Uh, so that's things like esports, uh, things like cinema in performance, and uh, importantly, again, video games. Uh, like many other artists of my generation, I wear quite a few hats. So outside of my own independent practice, I am a co-artistic director of Hong Kong Exile. I'm an artistic associate with Theatre Conspiracy. Uh, I'm part of the um, archival team VideoCan, which is look to, looking to um, accumulate and aggregate uh, different documentation videos of Canadian performance. Uh, and I'm also a digital interaction designer with The Culch, which is a venue in Vancouver, Canada. Um, I'm also uh, often working with a good friend of mine, an amazing artist named Patrick Blenkarn. Um, and I think to refer to some of the questions that we were asked for the prompts, uh, we were asked, how has our practices changed over the last 10 months? And as an artist who was working with digital before the pandemic, I can only say that it's accelerated quite a bit, um, but I'm taking this moment to reflect upon and to situate my own practice so that I can help make bridges and other platforms uh, to increase the contextual awareness of, of the different art that's happening, at least in Canada, but also abroad. Um, so things like digital and uh, virtual venues. Uh, I'm also interested in creating different um, digital archives and looking at, again, how do we share this information? How do we know more about our practices so that we can understand our own context? Um, 
And also, what do we imagine international collaboration to look like? I, hopefully, it's going to be longer term residencies and creation practices, uh, especially between artists, not only between festivals. Uh, so I think we're about at time. Um, thank you so much for your time and for your consideration. If you'd love to chat more, please get in touch. And I'd love to leave this with something for the editor. Take care. Soy Federico Irazábal, director artístico del Festival Internacional de Buenos Aires. Vivo y trabajo en la ciudad de Buenos Aires. Participar de esta cohorte es un modo de encontrarme con pares, con colegas y con artistas argentinos y canadienses y con un vínculo de profundidad. Corridos en el medio de la pandemia, de, del vértigo, de los viajes y de la dinámica cotidiana, haber tenido encuentros cada tres semanas con personas que piensan diferente del modo en el que uno piensa, es un modo de comenzar a profundizar los vínculos. Vínculos que ya no tienen que ver necesariamente con algo pragmático del orden de la compra y la venta, sino ya con algo del orden del intercambio de miradas, del intercambio de opiniones, del intercambio de perspectivas. Modos de entender y de comprender el oficio del programador, pero también modos de entender y comprender el trabajo puntual del artista. En estos encuentros y a lo largo de esos encuentros se pudo ir profundizando en esas miradas y como siempre ocurre cuando uno se encuentra con un otro, en este caso con un otro en términos nacionales, se construye y se moldea un espejo que siempre arroja resultados diferentes de los resultados que se arroja cuando uno se mira a sí mismo. Y en esos resultados diferentes comienza a gestarse un nuevo concepto en torno a lo que hace a nuestro oficio, que es la internacionalización de las artes escénicas y cómo trabajar al servicio de ellas. En un año tan particular que produjo tantas crisis en los ecosistemas escénicos locales, donde todos y cada uno quedaron profundamente lastimados, surge ahora la certeza de que una de las primeras cosas a hacer en el momento en el que esta crisis comience a pasar es restaurar ese ecosistema local. Pero siempre el modo de restaurar el ecosistema local o de profundizar el ecosistema local también tiene que ver con el encuentro con el otro. En esta pandemia hemos aprendido la utilización de las tecnologías y el modo en el que podemos generar y profundizar los cruces creativos entre artistas de diferentes latitudes y el modo en el que esa creación cruzada absolutamente transnacional tiene el poder de modificar no uno de esos ecosistemas, sino ambos. Vivo en la ciudad de Buenos Aires, soy artista escénico. Creo que si hay una característica de mi trabajo que, que yo pueda reconocer, tiene que ver con, con el hecho de, de, de pensar mi trabajo como un trabajo de, de actuación. Y cuando hablo de actuación, pienso o, o hablo de, de un trabajo que tiene que ver con, con la acción, con el hacer. Y ese hacer siempre está en relación con un otro, ¿no? con, con salir a buscar a un otro. Y ese otro no es solamente una persona, ¿no? un, 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 alguien con quien quieras trabajar, sino tam, no solamente es eso, sino que también es bueno, no sé, un texto, un material, un objeto, algún tema, eh, alguna imagen, eh, algún edificio, algún monumento, alguna, alguna esquina de... de cualquier calle. En ese sentido pienso que, 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 que mi proceso de trabajo tiene que ver con, con hacer laboratorio de aquello que, que a mí me llama la atención, que me convoca. Entonces, en ese sentido, <coughs> el trabajo escénico para mí siempre es, es, es bastante parecido. Lo que difiere quizás son los soportes, por eso yo no... no no creo que sea un, un artista multidisciplinario o que, o que haga diferentes cosas. Para mí, digo, hago básicamente siempre lo mismo. Lo que cambio eh, o lo que me interesa 
pensar o modificar o, o trabajar con es, el, es con, el, con el soporte, con los distintos soportes que, que nos ofrece el, este mundo o, o el arte también contemporáneo que, que podemos hacer o pensar. Este, pero sobre todo pienso eso, que, que, que mi trabajo está sumamente ligado a la actuación y, y pensar a la actuación como, como, como un hacer, ¿no? como un hacer con un otro. Por eso pienso que, que también en este contexto de, en el que vivimos, en este, con esta pandemia, que más allá de la pandemia o no pandemia, me parece que sobre todo evidencia eh, algo que el mundo nos ofrece constantemente, que es, es, es convivir con el horror, ¿no? con, con, el, con el terror, vivir con terror, con miedo, con, es, que, que el miedo nos paralice. Y en ese sentido para mí es, es más que fundamental eh, generar espacios de encuentro, de, de reflexión, de intercambio, de colaboración y que, y, y bueno, la, la, las comunidades artísticas y las personas dentro de esas comunidades artísticas tienen que estar, tenemos que estar muy atentas a, a, a eso. Eh, me parece que es fundamental para, para el crecimiento, para el desarrollo y para la subsistencia de nuestro trabajo. Hey, what's up? B-Boy Crazy Smooth. I am dancer, choreographer, and artistic director of the B-Boyism Dance Company. This video is being shot in my basement, which is located in Gatineau, Quebec, which is 15 minutes away from our nation's capital, Ottawa, Canada. B-Boyism is a street dance company. I'm a street dancer and the dancers in my company are also street dancers and we do a variety of different Uh, activities and work. If I have to resume, I would go in two sections. One would be uh, the teaching that we do. So I'm very fortunate uh, and lucky to have uh, exceptional dancers in the company, uh, uh, world champions that not only um, are good dancers, but are exceptional teachers. So we teach uh, people that have never danced before. So people that have four left feet, all the way to acrobats in Cirque du Soleil, professional dancers. So the range is, is quite, uh, quite broad. Um, we also, the other section I would say is the theater work that we do. So we create um, um, pieces that we perform in theaters and we've been able to travel and tour across Canada and internationally with our theater work as well. The one thing that would, um, would define us the most in our work is our motto, our mandate. And that is to dance to express and not to impress. So let me explain. I believe that if one is able to express themselves honestly, well, it's always going to be impressive. So it's that philosophy that we try to apply to every uh, kind of work that we do, outreach work, theater pieces, workshops, we always have that motto um, and, and that philosophy, dance to express, not to impress. Now, having said that, we have not been able to do uh, a lot of work in the past 10 months. Uh, myself, um, I found it very difficult, uh, but it has also exposed the fact that this is who I am. I'm B-Boy Crazy Smooth, I'm an artist, and I need to, to, to do my art, I need to be creative. And I found various ways to be creative um, throughout this pandemic. And I think that's the future as well of the, the, the international collaborations is we're gonna find various ways to keep connected because it's something that we need and it's something that we love. So uh, I can't wait to connect with, uh, with my fellow artists, uh, the people that love art, presenters from, from all over the world uh, in the future. Thank you very much. B-Boy Crazy Smooth. Peace, love, I'm out. My name is Pam. I live and work on the Haldeman Tract on Six Nations territory territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and Neutral Confederacies, also known as the Waterloo Region. I'm artistic director of a theatre company called Empty Space, where we create, produce, and present work by racialized artists. 
Uh, I feel like my approach to producing and presenting is, is very political to say the least. I like to uh, present work and create work that really captures this moment in time that we're living in and, and kind of just throw it back to the audience to give them things to talk about and think about and to be concerned about. And, um, you know, it's been really difficult to, to obviously do that in this time of isolation, but participating in this um, exchange with Capicoa, with presenters and artists in Chile has just been so refreshing to connect with presenters and artists who uh, share a very similar approach as I do. We're very, um, I feel like I've I found kindred spirits and like-minded artists and, you know, just being able to talk about process together is not something we often get to do together as, as presenters. And so it was sort of a, a gift to be able to do that in this time. And, you know, to talk about how this process of theater is not just about putting something in front of an audience, but it's also about talking, talking about these issues like you know, indigenous rights, to, to growing community and belonging, and also to, to just claiming space, whether it's physical or metaphorical. Um, and I really feel like that's what what the future holds for us. You know, it it's always been that way for us, but I think now more than ever, this international collaboration, the, the opportunities to have these exchanges are just so important if we're really going to seize this moment to solidify change in this world. So I'm really grateful to be able to connect with, with uh, like-minded artists and, and people who feel the way that I do across borders. Oi, eu sou Janaína Leite, eu sou diretora, dramaturga, atriz, sou aqui de São Paulo, Brasil. Tenho uma trajetória muito ligada ao teatro de grupo aqui da cidade. Estou numa companhia chamada Grupo 19 de Teatro há 20 anos. Mas lá para 2008 e 2009 eu peguei um caminho mais autoral, a partir de uma pesquisa com o documentário no teatro, é, o arquivo, o trabalho com os não atores. É, criei alguns espetáculos, bastante limites entre arte e vida. Escrevi um livro chamado Autoescrituras Performativas, do Diário à Cena. Acho que agora, a partir de, sei lá, os últimos quatro anos, comecei numa relação mais estreita com a performance. É, fiz um último espetáculo chamado Stabat Mater, no qual eu convidei para o processo a minha mãe real e um ator pornô, pesquisando aí algumas relações entre sexualidade, maternidade, é, gênero, que acho que também é uma questão que tem atravessado aí nos últimos anos meu trabalho. Eu oriento uma série de laboratórios com dezenas de artistas é, que estão também interessados por essas questões e aí numa zona limite entre teatro e performance. Acho que particularmente dessa, desses últimos trabalhos, a relação com, com a questão do obsceno vem ficando muito forte, obsceno no sentido amplo de um fora da cena, de uma... De uma de um teatro fronteiriço, né? E a questão da pornografia, particularmente, que foi muito forte no Stabat Mater, vem deixando aí consequências, interesses. E aí, nesse sentido, esse momento que tem essa escala planetária de uma pandemia que nos confinou, muitos de nós, em nossas casas, abriu também essa janela da virtualidade de forma muito forte, né? E, e isso, de alguma maneira, se conectou muito fortemente a, a essa pesquisa do olhar que eu já vinha desenvolvendo, né? E, e venho chamando de ensaios escopofílicos, esses experimentos que eu tenho feito na, na quarentena, aqui na minha casa, também em contato virtual com outros artistas, performers e, e espectadores, se é que eu posso dizer assim, porque também tenho experimentado essa questão do erótico, do prazer pela imagem, também em plataformas de sexo virtual, que acho que é algo pouco discutido nesse contexto da quarentena, mas que existe uma, um transbordamento da questão do erotismo e do sexo e das relações virtuais nessas plataformas, que tem sido bastante interessante pesquisar. Espero é, aproveitar dessa, dessa, dessa experiência, dessa possibilidade de desbravar um certo território virtual também para estabelecer outras pontes com outros artistas, 
do mundo, que também se interessam por linguagens híbridas, performativas, por zonas fronteiriças entre arte e vida. Acho que é isso. Hello, I am Finn Anderson. Uh, I am a writer, composer and singer-songwriter. I grew up in Fife on the east coast of Scotland, but I'm now based in Glasgow. I call my work musical theatre, but really that means for me anything which uses music and song as an integral part of the storytelling. Um, I collaborate with directors, uh, theatre makers and performers. For some projects I write the script, music and lyrics, and for other projects I collaborate with other musicians and composers or with other writers as well, depending on what the story calls for. I'm really drawn to stories which lend themselves to musical storytelling, um, stories which can give audiences a real emotional workout um, and which can be told in bold and, and highly theatrical ways. Um, a lot of my work up to this point um, has been inspired by nature, by landscape and Scottish landscape, and I'm also really inspired by Scottish folklore. I'm also really interested in, in folk music alongside folklore um, and how this translates between different cultures and different parts of the world. So increasingly I'm interested in collaborating with musicians from different musical cultures to my own um, and incorporating the kind of myths, legends and musical heritage um, of different parts of the world um, within theatre. Yeah, so Alongside um, my musical theatre work, I also um, work as a singer-songwriter and kind of have kind of a, a foot in, in the traditional music scene here in Scotland and that finds its way into, into the work that I make and into the stories that I choose to tell um, and finding ways of telling contemporary and urgent stories um, for contemporary audiences which draw on the traditions of Scotland um, and also which, which draw on traditions of elsewhere depending on what the story is that I'm telling. Um, so that's, um, that's included all kinds of different projects um, and moving forward that's something I'm really keen to explore more. I'm also really interested in technology and music technology um, and electronics within, within theatre and how that can combine with more acoustic and traditional forms of music to create exciting theatrical events. All my work is really story story led, um, and the musical world always really evolves from what the what the story needs. So I would say I don't have kind of one specific style, but that moves um, depending on what the story is and who the audience is. Over the last ten months, I've spent a lot of time <laughs> at home writing, uh, and I've also so I've been working on my second album as a singer songwriter, and have also managed to adapt. Um, one of my musicals, which was a collaboration um, for radio, and I'm currently working on other ideas for audio musical theatre too. I think technology um, gives us the power to connect internationally in a really exciting ways. I'm excited to continue exploring that and drawing on that, whilst also trying to create live experiences which you know use music and um, and really bring people and communities together in a way that. Um, technology cannot when we return back to that being a possibility again. My name is Donna Michelle St. Bernard. I'm also called Belladonna the Blessed. I'm an MC, a playwright, and an agitator based out of Hamilton, Ontario, in Canada. My artistic practice is uh, centered around ideas about individual experiences that result from global phenomenon. I'm interested in looking at stories that have been told from a particular lens and the way that that story looks different uh, if we ask someone else. I'm always interested in the ways that we treat each other. The last 10 months, I think, have really impacted the global conversation by refocusing ideas around justice, resource disparity, and access to power. I think those conversations are nothing new, but the last 10 months have really elevated and uh, broadened receptivity to the big ideas in these areas. And so Thinking about the way that we as artists tend to respond to modes of urgency 
and the way the urgency of disconnectivity has forced ingenuity in ways that we connect. My hope for the future of international collaboration is that we redefine urgency, that we find these ways to connect with each other that doesn't result in new exclusions based on fiber optic infrastructure. And that we continue to forget that things are impossible so that we can feel the urgency of possibilizing them. I think that's the future. <laughs>